Oh my goodness. Hey, Clay. Hey. Howdy. Howdy. I don't have a mask. A mask? I don't know what you're talking about, man. I am just in my new form. <laughs> this is it's not even your final form. Uh, this is uh, who, you know, I always thought I need to be. I, I wanted to be younger. I wanted to be, you know, the best of myself. And yeah. apparently the best of myself is part cat. And uh, that's the best part of all of us, though. Accessories. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure if it's I don't really think it's going to work out, to be honest with you. People are giving me weird looks on the street. It's not like uh, are, is this your coming out as a furry? Because I, I accept you for whatever I you identify. As. I mean, if I was actually in costume, yeah. I mean, but no, I'm not a furry. This is <laughs> absolutely. And uh, I've been trying this uh, new substance. Now, uh, I can't really advertise it. <laughs> um, yeah, but, make sure the label stays turned around. We yeah, don't want any. Yeah, issues. so. But this is not a very popular product. I had to go <laughs> underground to secure it. Um, it was offered to me by... Um, some weird person on the phone, but I took it and here I am. And you know what? Uh, I think they call that Hillock moisture is the name of the, mm. it's a, not a very catchy name. Uh, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's working. I don't I, think so either. I mean, it's, I'm fine with it, but this I mean, is I you. Just, this is you, this is your own person. I mean, I'm jumpy now and jumping at things and yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't even know where this hat came from. It just like, <laughs> it just popped out. Um, you know, but uh, you know, let me go and do like a a swap here. Okay. And then uh, once I come back, I'll be in my old decrepit regular body. <laughs> I, I, okay, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll be right, right. back, man. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I got <laughs> Take the activator. Take the activator. <laughs> Don't forget the activator. I just backsplashed on myself. <laughs> well, there's the guy I know. You know, I had better eyesight, too, when I was uh, in that other body. You can almost see in the dark. Yeah, it was really cool. It, um, it has its benefits, though, you know. I, yeah. It rhymes with uh, icking lay your ass. A. <laughs> I'm going to do that later once I switch out again. <laughs> I need to go prowl the streets at night. <laughs> Guys, welcome. Welcome, y'all. Another episode of Cinematic Suffering. And this time we're talking about... The substance. The substance. It's on. It's it's what's on the lips of most horror fanatics right now. The writer, director, Car Corley Fargit has really done something special for us. 2024 has been an absolute gift for us horror fans, and I'm uh, quite grateful for it. Yeah, yeah. What, what a pleasure. What a triumph. Uh, I, I remember seeing the advertisements for The Substance come across in vague feeds, I should say, and like Instagram and uh, maybe sometimes in Facebook. Uh, I would see The Substance, and it didn't really say anything other than, you know, what if you... What was the what's the catch line? What if you could uh, ever like, dream of having could a be, better version of yourself? Yeah. What if you could yeah. create a better version of yourself, just yeah. younger, sexier? And I, I was like, well, that looks like Demi Moore. That's really cool. Um, so I was just kind of anxious, anxiously kind of awaiting it because I didn't know too much about um the movie. Um, what about you? What was your first little? If you know, it got on my radar because all a lot of what kind of finds its way to me on youtube and facebook is in the horror uh genre and this game this uh, this game <laughs> this movie had a lot of early buzz i kept hearing about how bananas it was and how hard it went and i was like okay i started to get a little bit more interested in it and then some of the early reviews started to trickle in and they started yeah. to come in from um you know, content creators that I respect, not the shills, not the, 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 the people that you can tell are like, okay, these are the horror fans This is part right. of the tribe. And they were raving about it. So I couldn't wait to see it. Um, I just feel like, you know, non sequitur, this is probably going to become spoilery pretty quick. You know, oh yeah. Yeah. For warning. Sure. Um, I can't talk about this movie without even accidentally getting into spoilers. So if you want to see it, uh, without any anything being ruined, make sure that you come back to this podcast later. Give it a thumbs up first. 
go watch the movie and then come back and and we'll all discuss it. But um, yeah, it's been out for a minute. You know, the the real horror aficionados have seen it already. So we're here to discuss. These yeah, items. we're here to dive into its guts per se. Uh, <laughs> it's squishy, malleable guts. Squishy, malleable guts. Uh, so uh, the substance so far has on an IMDb an eight out of ten. Now on IMDb, that's really good. Um, okay, people are really harsh on IMDb. IMDb. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has got is at a ninety percent uh, critic score. That's unheard of. Yeah, and then uh, Metacritic is at a seventy-seven percent. So that's kind of average for Metacritic. Um, so. I wow, I mean, I don't even know where to start. Let's start maybe with the director, Coralie. Uh, Carly Cor- Farjeet. Farjeet. Is that how you sp- sp- uh, pronounce it? It is. Yeah. I okay. looked that I looked that up. I looked at a couple interviews with her. Um, I have never seen Revenge. This is uh the substance is her sophomore film, which is yeah. just insane to me that it was this yeah. is somebody that's just meant to to helm films. It was it was it was Let's, just so let me good. talk. Yeah, let me talk briefly about Revenge, man. Okay, uh, this is a movie you have to see. I mean, I will, it's. Then. I think it's on Shutter. I mean, just dig it up. It is. Um, it is a revenge film, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but it is full of blood. I mean, if you want blood, there's about as much blood in Revenge as there is in the substance. So, oh, okay. I'm sorry. It goes. It goes over the top. It, it's. It's a wonderful, gritty bloody movie and you definitely need to see it so once i found out that she was the same director of this i was i I was about to lose my mind because i was like oh (laughs) my god it makes sense it yeah yeah so now that's 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 awesome um you know i i went in with pretty high expectations just based off of a lot of the critical reviews i'd been hearing i was and you know like i i wanted to go in without spoils that's why i gave such a you know, like a heavy handed spoiler warning in the beginning is because I, I as, as soon as people started creeping into st- spoiler territory, I just, no, no, I don't want to listen yeah. to it because yeah, I wanted too. to go in without any, uh, without too many preconceptions. And when people say it goes bananas at the end, it, it is gonzo by the end. I mean, <laughs> and it was, I said to my partner before we um, went to see it, it was like, I hope, so much that we have walkouts during this movie because I yeah. don't it's it's such a childish infantile thing with me but I love going to a horror movie and seeing people walk out it was uh yeah. people walked out during um Evil Dead Rise to to the sound of my laughter I just can't <laughs> help it I was it, it might as well have been a, a friggin Jerry Lewis comedy back in his heyday or something <laughs> I was just bent over laughing at the ridiculousness of it. And it was the same thing towards the third act of this movie. Yeah. It went so, so off the rails in a yes, great so, way. So that's uh, as I, when you told me that, and then the same experience uh, happened to me in my showing that three people walked out in that third <laughs> act that uh, I was just laughing. I was just, I was, <laughs> I was doing like the trucker move. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was doing the, I, you know, as people were oh, leaving, yeah, she, it's she, so she... rude. I was like, yeah, yeah, away with you, neophyte. So, and the, and then like uh, near the end, uh, it, it, it's so bonkers. Like near the end, there's people that were groaning behind me. There's maybe about 15 people in the theater by this point, and uh, the there was several people behind me that were groaning. Oh my god! Oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, people. I mean, by the end, everyone was just either into it or not into it by the end of the film. And you know, when the lights came up, uh, the people that were against it were like, "Well, that's two and a half hours. I'm never going to get back." And that's probably the worst movie I've seen ever. And then uh, another couple was like, well, I think it's the best fucking thing I've ever seen. So <laughs> and I'm getting ready to throw hands with you. I thought I, I, there wasn't like a real meanness, but everyone was just kind of laughing, you know, and not really arguing. So it was yeah. a nice little camaraderie in there. You could tell there's horror fans and then there's like casual horror fans that were in there. So the hardcore ones, we loved it. The the casual ones thought it was a waste of time. I mean, yeah. you know, like I, It just it baffles the mind that people in my mind that people don't know anything about the movie that they're getting ready to go see. Like I, you know, I do enough research to know that how can you not know that movies like Evil Dead Rise and The Substance are not going to be for you? All it all it takes is just one review. Just watch one review and you'll be like, oh, no, I don't think that this is going to be for me. It's it's yeah, it's going to make me poop my precious little pampers. I don't want to watch this. And and the thing is, everything was so over the top. It, it, though, if you took any of it seriously, just the way the movie was filmed, it was just hyper realistic. It was, it was not meant. To, it was 
more of a a take on society and culture and it wasn't supposed to be this harsh reality to, like uh, some documentary or anything <laughs> it was an no, over, it was, over the top gore film pretty much it really was and it, it everything was filmed through this almost fisheye lens it was one step away from the corners of the the lens being distorted it was the 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 camera work was so um kind of th- through the rabbit hole, you felt like you were in some kind of almost a hallucinatory experience yeah. watching this thing with the the colors, the set designs, the way that people were acting was uh, just a little bit just uh, amplified. Yeah. It just it was none none of it felt like this the real. It was a reflection of the real world, but it was a, yeah. a carnival mirror reflection. Yeah. Of the real that's a that's a perfect way of putting it. It was a carnival re- carnival reflection of the real world. It, it was it was so souped up and the the exaggerated, especially Dennis Quaid, uh, who played Harvey. Oh, he was and, great. Who was amazing. Apparently, that was that part was supposed to be played by Ray Liotta. Um, but it, yeah, he, he passed away before they could finish uh, finish the part. So I think they recast it, or he didn't record anything just yet. But they just had to recast it anyways, and then Dennis Quaid got the part. Yeah. Yeah, Ray Ray died. You know, rest in peace, Ray. I, I, my brother and I had an ongoing joke about Ray Liotta's towards the end of his career. Uh, bless his heart, he was doing any and every role, and we were, uh, we made a joke that said, uh, "Are you think there's going to be a hard Ray in this movie? Meaning, he's, <laughs> is he going to pop a blood vessel? Are we going to see that blood vessel in his in his head pop?" And he, right, you know, I couldn't help but think about like Ray Liotta as I was watching that role and thinking that he would have been great in it, but he would have been great. Damn, Dennis Quaid was good in it. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I could totally see Ray Liotta doing the same uh, over the top bits and everything. But yeah, D- Dennis Quaid just, just ruled it. His, uh, I mean, the, the, even the sound design was, uh, was, I mean, I talk the, the soundtrack, the sound design and the cinematography. I mean, everything was perfection to me. Oh, um, nice. There were parts in the sound design where you're just utterly just grossed <laughs> out. And you, I think, you know what part I'm really talking about. It, I, <laughs> and I mean, it involves part, a lot of shrimp. <laughs> oh yeah. It was, you know, like for all of the, um, insane over the top gore effects and stuff that you get by the end. Uh, Dennis Quaid's character gobbling down shrimp with just this <laughs> macro focus, <laughs> and he's dipping it in some saucy stuff that looks like yeah. five thousand calories a mouthful <laughs> or something. It, it, he's just eating like a ravenous animal while he's uh, telling Demi Moore's character that she's washed up, and it's just. It, I, it was so great. Like it could have in, in the hands of a lesser uh, storyteller, it could have been this big, you know, like see how evil men are to us, see how yeah. like what they've done to us. But I, I didn't get that at all from it. Cause I, I don't know, maybe it's, I just empathized with the character and I, you know, I, I was really bought into what the movie was doing yeah. and where it was going. It was, uh, it, 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 if if Carly Fargeet is not a fan of like Stuart Gordon and um, Brian Usna and especially Guar, yeah. by the end of the movie, it's a Guar concert. Like yeah. just through and through, I'll eat my hat. That there has to, <laughs> she has to at least be aware of these uh, of these creators. Yeah, yeah. She is. If she hasn't before, she definitely does now because it's just <laughs> the the style was just uh, over the top and great. Um, so speaking of Demi Moore, um, I, I haven't been keeping up with Demi Moore. I'm not sure if she has done anything recently. Um, I've always been a fan of her. I thought she, she was a great actor. Um, but, uh, this was, you know, uh, it, it almost felt autobiographical in a way, yeah. um, because, you know, I'm, I, I don't know how old Demi Moore is, but you know, she's older she's in her sixties. Yes, yeah, so she's not being looked at like she was when she was younger, and you know, I, I, I felt, yeah, you know, I, it's just how people look, not just Hollywood. I mean, I think Hollywood is a big part of it, but how people in society look on women, especially as they age. Yeah, that, uh, it's uh, it, how people think. Oh, there, they, she hasn't aged gracefully, has she? But look at him; he's he's hotter now than he was when he was in his twenties, you know, and he's sixty, yeah. and, it, and it's this weird reverse dynamic of. Um, beauty standards and uh, we may have seen that in movies before that were a little more subtle about it but this was like very in your face about you know 
And then I, I always thought about the uh, dream of a better version of yourself, the, the yeah. tagline for the movie. And to me, when I went into the movie, I thought it would be a younger version of themselves, not yeah. not not particularly a better version. I was like, oh, it's just going to be who she was maybe in her 20s. Right. And and I don't think that was the, the case. I think it was uh, the person that was being born was what they thought would be a better, better version of this. So not necessarily the younger self. Is that, yeah, it, I know. I totally get it. And, and what's been interesting for me about this movie, well, going back to what you said about, um, you know, like the almost autobiographical, uh, quality of it. This, what a ballsy move for Demi Moore to do this because it's so on the nose. I mean, she's somebody that's, that's, you know, she's she's probably had a little bit of surgery done, and she's yeah. an actor that we all remember striptease, G.I. Jane. We remember the sexuality of the characters that she's portrayed. And and you know, like wow, she looks great. She's she's in her 50s. Wow, she looks great for somebody that's in her 50s. That that yeah. was always kind of part of the conversation around Demi Moore. And you know, there's she still looks phenomenal especially Beautiful for somebody woman, yeah. yeah and she she looked fantastic and yeah. um but you know there's still there's only so much exercising there's only so much plastic surgery that you can do time is going to get you and the yep. camera goes right in on those parts like all the things that you know that that she would feel you would assume that she'd feel kind of self-conscious about as both her character and as a person is just right there on display and i, th I thought it was a really just just a ballsy yeah. role for her to do and i just I, i'm so grateful for her for having done the role because as the movie goes on she's just got to be slathered in makeup and this this yeah. whole you know the story evolves in the way that it's gonna go and it's just it, she's such a trooper for doing that yeah she was absolutely amazing and i i you know i, I don't haven't read any uh interviews yet or read any kind of like backlog or background or trivia that uh but i i assume i like to assume that corley had some part to play in that to make her feel you know maybe they had this uh great kinship or spirit uh that you know first of all it's a woman director and i i i don't know if a, a man could have pulled this off um as as successfully as Corley did, uh, just uh, the way it focuses on Demi's shortcomings uh, as yeah. she's growing older, and and she, the ball, like you said, the I say the balls, but you know the ovaries it took to yeah, to really the, expose herself like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was wild. I, I'm sure that um, it, it that had to have some kind of component in it because in the the few interviews that I've listened to. Uh, Corley Forgit said that it was a very personal um, movie. It's 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 kind of a violent expression of how people treat themselves with these yeah. kind of beauty standards and how they and and what they you know kind of this stress and this violence that they heap on themselves and um, you know Demi Moore's character was was great in it. It was it kind of really makes you. It, you know, it's, 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 I feel this kind of weird, you know, uh, uh, kind of mixed feelings about it. Cause on one hand, I have a lot of contempt for Hollywood, but then on the other hand, it's, it, you, the film does a good job of putting you in the mindset of her character. Like her entire sense of self is, is deteriorating. Not right. only are, is she fading, you know, you know, succumbing to old age, like we all will, her career is, is, done and she's just not seen as the same relevant sex symbol that she used to and when your whole personality and self-identity is just so wrapped up in how you yeah. look and and it, that's got to be kind of tough yeah and it, i think they they uh, they really portray that very well at the very beginning that opening that opening credit scene where we see the creation of the star, what we assume to be on Hollywood Boulevard. We don't know where it is. You don't know what time period it is. You don't know if this is way back when, or this is now, you know, it, it's, you don't get that sense, but you know, from the, the freshness of the star, we see a brief plant of uh, uh, Elizabeth sparkle, just kind of an overhead shot of her standing on her star, getting her picture taken. And then as the years progress, how the star just kind of, People are looking at the star, amazed at it, and then just eventually forget about Elizabeth. And you see people just walking over the star. The star gets cracks in it from age, wear and tear, foot traffic, food and shit is just uh, falls <laughs> on it. And and eventually it just gets to this point where and then it just kind of jumps into 
where we see Elizabeth Sparkle doing this aerobic kind of uh, workout. Jane Fonda. Uh, Jane Fonda kind of workout. Kind of thing, yeah. Um, and so that was a beautiful like lead up to where we were at the current period. So we didn't have yeah. we didn't have to know what everything that she did all in that little span of a couple of minutes, we knew everything we needed to know about Elizabeth Sparkle. I right. Right. I, th I agree. And it was, um, and it, it's such Elizabeth, by, by the way, by the way, Elizabeth Sparkle is Demi Moore's character. I don't, I don't know if I said that. So, Oh yeah. I was, I was yeah. like, Oh, it sounds like a, it sounds like an adult actress. No, it was, <laughs> it was Demi Moore's character in it. But, um, uh, I, yeah, I just, I just love the movie. It was, um, it, like you said, it, it was kind of, you saw people using cell phones, but it was aesthetically right in the eighties. But at yeah. the same time, they didn't seem to try real hard to kind of make it a period piece. It was, yeah. you know, the film took liberties and it, it worked because the whole thing was this kind of dreamlike um, reflection of, of society and of yeah. reality. And it, it could have so easily gotten pretentious and, and, and been um, preachy and, and condescending, but it wasn't, it was, it, it was a very, you know, it, it was a very personal film. And um, I love the way it set up the mythology. It's, it's kind of like, you know, harkens back to movies like gremlins or any other kind of, of horror movie where there's set rules. It's like, this yeah. is the, this is the stuff. The substance itself was, like okay if she's got to be somewhat of a Stuart Gordon fan because that's that's reanimator fluid in that syringe it's the same yeah. color and everything you know? yeah and I, I remember I mean of course you have to take some you know just take some periods of disbelief you know because you yeah, you have yeah. to acknowledge that this is a horror movie but at the same time it's a fantasy it's yeah. not it's not based in any kind of reality so you know we can't say as you know, later in the film, as we see the effects of overstaying your welcome in one body, uh, the other body uh, retrogrades and deteriorates. And, uh, you know, <laughs> this is jumping forward a bit, you know, but we see Demi Moore in this decrepit old, uh, probably past death body, just still rocking and rolling, dragging people around. And, you know, there's people in the theater going, oh, she couldn't do that. She's too old. I was like... Fuck she can't have here. a body bursting out of her back either, but it happened. <laughs> oh, it's from the very get go. It, it, you know, I mean, like as soon as she takes this stuff, this secondary body, this young hot woman kind of erupts out of her back and you get this weird duality to where the, uh, they call it the matrix body. I think it's like you basically yeah. the Demi Moore. Avatar or whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. like sitting there with her spine all open, this big vaginal wound up her back. Yeah. <laughs> and they sew it up and she's fine now, though. It's, there's no way. I mean, it's like you, if you, if it, at what point in the movie, the thing <laughs> we're talking about people walking out, people walked out in the last like 20, 30 minutes. Not even yeah. that, like it was right at the finale of the movie. Yeah. People were marching out. And I was like, at what point in the movie were you so offended that you had to leave? <laughs> what, did, what do you think you're here for? You know? What was the, uh, yeah, everything before this wasn't ridiculous, but now this last uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes is ridiculous. It's like, uh, yeah, it's, when, it's, a, when, it's a fantasy. You just, oh, yeah, yeah. When it, when it literally turns into a guar concert, I was like, yeah. you know, like I turned to to Carrie, I was like, "This is Guar. It's Gua like this is what you go to see when you go to see Guar. It's it's totally it's a Guar yeah. monster. It's spewing the un, the same just appropriate totally amount of Guar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just put her on a sprinkler and just turn her around or, or, or like a top or whatever. It was it was really fun. I imagine Carly for for she told you, more blood, more blood. <laughs> How you say more blood? So. Let, let's mention the younger self or the, the better version of Demi Moore is played by uh, Margaret Qualley, who oh. is Sue in the film. Yeah, she's just simply Sue, who's um, who's great in it. They they cast the perfect person to be this kind of uh like just she represents everything that's all that's kind of contemptible about uh young pretty people in a way yeah. she encapsulates just selfish so it's it's selfish to the point to where she's destroying her other half of herself so yeah. that she can that she can have a little bit more time in this younger body which the film should have just been called plastic surgery. It's the, the most on the nose, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, indictment of plastic surgery culture that I've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, this was another, another 
uh, actor Margaret Qualley, who her mother is Andy McDowell, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. She, uh, Margaret, she put herself out there too. I mean, oh, yeah. if Demi Moore is doing it, then yeah, the younger this uh this younger version is definitely putting herself out there. So there's a lot of nudity, uh, which I did not mind at all. <laughs> no, no, it was it, um and it I can't I, it, in a way. it needed it. And it was just like you're you're not you're not I, I was I like you talked about the vaginal opening and her and Demi Moore's back. It's a you're not gonna be born with clothes on, you know, you're not gonna yeah. have your kid with you know your pants on you know these is it's, it's all very bare uh to the world and that's what was so great about it and that there was no i don't think there was any punches uh pulled or anything with that no and it's it's almost like they needed to have it you know like when the younger version when sue is doing her version of demi moore's exercise routine the, mm -hmm. the camera doesn't flinch away it's it's right in there and in, in people's yeah. butt cracks and it's, yeah. it's a very it's it's very much um you know as much of an outward examination of the human body as it is right. an inward one because like as as she overstays her welcome which results in her leeching off of the Demi Moore character yeah. that body just gets more and more and more grotesque and it's it's this yeah it's, it's, it's this weird it's like this inner ugliness kind of is manifested in something that we can most definitely see and experience in the out in the real world and I, I always, uh, I, I, it got me thinking. It got you thinking because as much yeah. as it was over top and it was bloody as hell, that you know, it, I, I was thinking to myself, the they're the same person. And I think the 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 substance, the the voice on the phone said, "There is no we. There is only I." Yeah. Um, so what he means, what he was saying was that you know, when you're in your younger body, that's you in your younger body, and you there's a set of rules you have to go back uh after seven days and that's for a specific reason uh, to have the body juices and everything to reform <laughs> but you know they have a whole thing set up where you have to maintain and do all these rules and if you don't follow the rules as we've seen in other horror movies uh i think of a uh, talk to me as one of those if you don't follow yeah. the rules then shit's gonna go bonkers and that's pretty much what happens when oh, she's yeah, in her most definitely and when she's in her younger body, she loves it so much that going back to the older body, it must feel like, I don't know. I, I can't even, I was trying to imagine what it was feel like. If I could go into a younger version of myself and play around and be 20 years older than I am now, 30 years older, and I wouldn't want to come back to this body either. I mean, even for seven days, um, I'm like, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to make me sound like the biggest loser on earth, but <laughs> probably in my case, <laughs> the only thing that would happen is that I would just, you know, like be just self-abusing to four times more and just be that much more frustrated by my own <laughs> lonely unfuckability. But, you know, we all had different paths in life, but I, that that's exactly where I kind of went with it too, is it, it makes you ask that question. And yeah. I just, I thought that it was such a brilliant kind of, um, you know, on the nose, almost obvious in a way, but still really artful and brilliant thing that, that like the one has to leech from the other in order to, to feel this way, which, yeah. you know, and, and it, the, the, the mirror of that into reality is you see it in so many people that are just like cutting on their face, doing this elective surgery to, to make themselves look younger, but they just turn mm -hmm. themselves into, into Caricatures. people that are hard to look at. Yeah. yeah. Like they're, you know, I don't, I, well, I mean, and, you know, I don't necessarily want to name names, but there's, there, there's some celebrities out there that are just painful to look at now. Like, why would yeah. you do that? Like we all have to, I, it's your face, but we have to see it. And <laughs> it's, it's the same yeah. weird kind of dysmorphia kind of, you know, played out in, in a way that, that, uh, you know, is, is very kind of cartoonish and over the top by the end, but yeah. it's, that's exactly where the film needed to go. It's, it's why it's kind of, people are selling themselves short by getting so offended and walking out of it. I love it. Right. And again, I, I'll never stop talking about yeah, it. Yeah. I, I loved it too. And I don't know it, it again. It, I don't, I'm not in other people's head as they're watching these, this movie, but to me, it was, it was a deeper thought process. It was a deeper movie than just the outward qualities than what the, they were seeing. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, when I see uh, celebrities and most, most of them are female celebrities that do get these procedures done, the Botox, the Botox. And, and, you know, we can't, I can't judge them for what they do because they're trying to maintain 
the look of when they were in their prime and that's what people want that's what they think people want that's what hollywood tells them that, that they need to do and it just winds up making them caricatures of who they were um but you know you rarely see that in men uh actors uh because again they think everyone thinks men age more gracefully um, but you can see Dennis Quaid has had some work too. In this oh well, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, like Mickey Rourke has managed yeah. to turn himself into a a, a living mummy. <laughs> and there's, yeah, and uh, you know, I'm I'm sure that you see it in Hollywood a lot, regardless of, <clears throat> you know, uh, of of gender. But it it is one of those uh, it is one of those things where society is very hypocritical even in 2024 yep. when um everyone you know not everyone but uh a lot of people want to kind of uh you know tout how progressive and how how much they're pushing against that it's still out there it's like it's yeah. still <laughs> and in yeah. and, and, and in an odd kind of way it's that's the thing that i love about a lot of classic horror movies is that they can have their cake and eat it too they can condemn the very thing that they're yeah that they're exploiting to get asses in seats. Like, um, uh, you know, a good example is I, the, I spit on your grave movies. It's just like, Oh, look at this. Isn't this an awful, um, it, isn't this, isn't this awful, but it's also titillating, you know, that, yeah. and that's why it's in the movie. It's, it's this kind of, you know, have your cake and eat it too scenario. Yeah. I think it's also, uh, especially the substance kind of got my mind jogging about immortality and yeah. the quest for eternal youth and, how we're all kind of seeking that, right? And yeah. uh, I feel, you know, as I push 50 and, you know, I I see myself aging and I see that I can't do the things I did, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago even. And, yeah. you know, I'm looking for that, that magic pill, that uh, that procedure that can halt that process. Just, just pause time just for a little bit. Just let me get a little, squeeze a little more. Uh, life out of this uh, one that I have, and uh, you you know you can see that in this movie. You can see it in other movies too, um, when it deals with this kind of subject. And yeah, that, I would almost wouldn't it be friggin' awesome if they did if if they just gave it like you know if they with their ble with Carly Farjeet's blessing kind of let a, a, a you know a um a sequel be made from the male perspective. Cause for us, it's all like, mm -hmm. you know, Viagra and vir virility and, and, um, you know, like a testosterone treatments yeah. and stuff like that. I think that that's where the kind of the male insecurity comes in is our, our, our worthiness is so wrapped up in our yeah. virility and our, and, and so when that starts to, to wane, it, we're kind of like left with this sense of self that's, that's diminished too. That's another little hypocritical thing too, in movies too, Clay, that where that's a good point. Uh, what it would be great to see like a, a, a sequel, uh regarding to the guy who introduced demi moore to the substance yeah um, yeah so uh, his, there was a story there that we only saw glimpses of which is really cool it added so much layer to to the story that it would be great to see that maybe in another yeah. movie you know what his perspective and um yeah it was demi moore's nurse who was you know kind of um you know like giving her an examination specifically to see if she was going to be yeah. a good candidate for the substance and he was one of these shockingly beautiful men you yeah know, he's that, model and, yeah and and as an old man he would look he was looking rough so yeah it was, uh yeah but, uh, it, I, I, I was a lot to think about i was mentioning hypocrisy there only because uh men's bodies and women's bodies are treated differently in the movies too yeah um, in this movie it's easier for i think a general audience to s look at a woman's body and i think that's been like that for decades ages since the cinema is first came out that you know you're going to see more nude women on screen than you are going to see uh men's genitalia um so i wonder how a movie like that would come across because the if they're going to show all they did in this one. They they need to show it all in the in a, in a sequel. Should there be one, you know, or you know something like that. That it's, you know you. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I'm just saying, you know, when you see movies and you see male genitalia in the movies, uh, people are. It, it feels like even me watching, <laughs> like I, I know I have the parts, but seeing it on screen is like. Ah, okay, I don't. I, don't I mean, it's like we don't need this. I yeah, didn't realize it was yeah, one like, of these kind so of they movies. Could've, they could have written this out of the script, and it wouldn't have had any impact. But you know, well, it's 
it's and it's a good point and it kind of you know i mean that's it's one of the things there's so many things to love about this movie any kind of movie where the the more the the days pass after you've watched it and the more you think about it and the more smarter it feels and the deeper it feels that's that's kind of um yeah. validates the the worth of the movie to me if if the substance had been all about like we're going to shock the audience this is going to be about it we're just going to go as hard as possible and you know I, it's not to to make it all about gender but if it had been you know like if if the, this had been kind of like most horror male horror directors probably would have gone that way with it or they wouldn't have been able to approach the material with the same empathy yeah. um it wouldn't have been as compelling because the whole lead up and the whole um you know the the, the the introduction to the characters and bringing you into their world and bringing you into their insecurities is why it was compelling it's the yeah. the the gore and all that stuff is is a fun kind of you know uh it's a it, fine it's reaction a fun result almost. yeah yeah no I, I i agree totally the the empathy uh, that Corley puts into this uh, from the uh, from a female perspective is just uh, amazing to watch. Um, I, I other little aspects that I really loved about the movie it, it's definitively divided into three chapters: yeah. Elizabeth, Sue, and then the final chapter, Monster Sue, <laughs> is when we get fucking crazy. Um, we haven't been really spoiling the movie right now. I mean, I feel we've been like touching on some major points of it. We, we, we can still go along with it, but the the Monster Sue, everything that led up to that point was just so insane that <laughs> it felt like it felt like the natural progression of where it needed to go. Yeah. And at that point is when the people started walking out of the theater, I think is, uh, well, I mean, not, not necessary monster Sue. When we started getting a glimpse of, when we get that first glimpse of her in the mirror, I just started clapping. I was just oh, like, I was going like, yeah, I was, I was like, yes, this is fucking amazing. Meanwhile, people behind me were groaning. Oh, it's going yeah. so good. Oh, fuck fuck off, yeah. man. You fucking pussy. It's like, you know, and I, I, I kind of hate to be like that in a way because I realized that, you know, I, I know a lot of people that are just as revolted as that by horror movies and their revulsion is because you know, like, I don't know. I, 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 I wanted to say that it's because you're a nice person, but it's, it's also, it's like, you're, you're a weakling, man. I mean, it's like you face, face your fear, face, yeah. face the ugliness in the world. You, you get the privilege to see some real art and real art is yeah. going to be horrible and ugly. It's like, you know, like I've met a lot of people that um, want to just almost uh, verbally attack me when they find out that I'm a big fan of Guar. Like I'm just all oh, yeah. they suck. They're blah, 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 blah. it's like you don't, <laughs> you know, like too, yeah. art is not pretty. It's not. I don't. Yeah. It shouldn't be. It should walk people out of the theater. It should yeah. attack your sensibilities and and your. It should eat the sacred cow right in front of you. It's yeah. not. You know, otherwise it's all just poetry that your grandma would like. You know, birds in flight and that kind yeah. of nonsense. Fuck that. Yeah. And that's why I thought that uh, I think this is a, a true auteur piece from Coralie. I think oh, this yeah. is, I mean, Revenge was a great movie. Don't get me wrong. But I'll this, watch it tonight, probably. Yeah. Uh, but this this is an auteur piece. This is up there with, you know, this. I'd say, you know, some of the greats, you know, from Hitchcock to, you know, whoever. Yeah. From, from the beginnings of Carpenter. It, it's like it, it, it's a truly artistic masterpiece. And I'm not just. I'm not just tweeting out. We're not paid by anyone to say that. We we certainly don't know any of the filmmakers involved with the film. It, it, it just struck me on so many levels, uh, and not only just revulsion and pure uh, aesthetic quality and reaction to it, but you know, to, to, to have you really think about the human condition yeah. and the duality that is in yourself between good and evil. And is there a good and evil that you don't yeah. know? I mean, the, it's all just a, such a mishmash gray area. And I think it's portrayed very well in this. Oh, movie. it was yeah. it it was brilliant. I can't wait to um, eventually own it on on Blu-ray and yeah. and watch it again. Um, I can't wait to see what Miss Fargie 
comes out with next um you know uh it, it, it yeah it was it was really something special between yeah. that and um you know like i really liked alien romulus but i love the substance the substance yeah. went hard like one thing i wanted to mention real quick is that if um if if you're not really into to horror like you haven't um you know there's a lot of of younger fans that haven't that are just now getting into horror if if you want to see some companion movies to this, check out like uh, check out some of the stuff that's inspired it. Like um, Society is a good so, one. Yeah, Slither is, is another good one. Uh, Basket Case. There's a lot of really great. Uh, you know, this, this didn't I mean, come from nothing. It, there's there's other stuff out yeah. there that were kind of the seeds of inspiration for this, at least visually and creatively. Yeah, I think parallels to the movie. Um, I I've I've I, I've brought up Infinity Pool. Um, okay. It, obviously, different film, different ideas, but you know the idea of that duality. Um, who is real? It, are you real? You know. It, yeah. Is uh, that's what we saw in the substance where you know she was. They were comparing. They were calling each other. You know, she's ruining the apartment. The young person would be like. Uh, the young version would be like. She's ruining the apartment. She's a pig, and then. <laughs> And then the uh, the voice in the phone would be like there is no she there's only you it's only you and, and the other one would be like she's she's spending too much time in the in in her body and it's ruining mine it's like yeah. you know that's you, yeah I can't really? remember the line but it was just like that was another thing it was just this disembodied voice on the phone you never yeah. get this really uh, they don't even give you an inkling of what of why this stuff exists or what the the um, you know uh, what the the reason for it is and that's i think that, that benefits and i don't need to know that stuff it kind of yeah. keeps the mystery alive but yeah this is one of those movies where i did not you know so there's some horror movies where i i need to know well uh, uh, terrifier is one of those <laughs> yeah i always bring it up uh but it's one of those things where i those movies i need to know because it's such a simplistic uh premise there is no really uh, there's no multi layers in Terrifier. There, there's only yeah. one layer, and and so that I could say that for Friday the Thirteenth and all that stuff. There's nothing really multi layered there. So, but with this movie, uh, you get everything that's handed to you, and you just accept it. Uh, yeah. We, there's been a few other movies that we've talked about where we don't mind that kind of world building and uh, uh yeah, world building that that you see because it's not spoon fed, but at the same time you can accept it. That's, yeah yeah it's yeah. like it's like you say there's a big suspension of disbelief and oh man we could we could probably talk about this movie yeah. forever we've gone kind of gone long but um yeah the substance definitely if you if you're a fan of horror if you're a fan of of body horror and a brilliant social commentary you, you this is one that you got to keep in your collection yeah definitely uh one of my favorite films of this year probably in a, a while actually so uh, this is definitely what i'm getting on uh blu-ray and I'll probably be watching several times over and over, maybe yeah. make a, a yearly yeah. tradition or something. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait to own it. Um, twenty twenty four has been kind to us horror fans. We've gotten yeah. some some real gems so. for sure. I think that it's like we're seeing a, a renaissance, maybe of uh, the rise of some really great directors and uh, people who have uh, brilliant ideas and brilliant uh, visual eyes and aesthetics. Oh, it's it's yeah. great you know in a world where all the mainstream movies are just just mucus like whatever star wars is farting out now yeah. and and <laughs> terminator and all this crap that's just just meant to be as derivative and safe as possible horror is is the one place where you get to see original ideas and um you know young directors you, young yeah. directors coming out and showing what they what chops they have and what they can really do and yeah it's it's I would think a definite renaissance. So I was substance total hamburgers up many. Hamburgers uh, absolutely. Up. Mi yeah. Mi yeah. Many multiple uh, disparately <laughs> aged fingers way up. On the <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this thank has been cinematic it. suffering. Uh, I, I don't know. We can call this a bits and chunks episode. Let's call it that. And yeah, let's do it. This has been the substance. I'm Jason. I'm clay. That's clay. And thank you for, so much for joining us guys. Love y'all. Take care. Bye. See ya.